And today, okay, we're going to read the sad part about Paul's last few days and his death. Again, if you are sensitive to those kind of pictures, close your eyes, okay? So you don't have to see uh, Paul's death, how he was killed, how he was murdered. Here we go. Paul of Tarsus, as a Roman citizen, you must renounce your faith in a false ruler. Say the words, Caesar is Lord, and the great and merciful Nero will save you. Yeah, all you have to do is say, Caesar is Lord, and then you, you will not be killed. I am, Paul answers, I am a citizen of another country, and Christ's mercy has already saved me. Bow your knee to Caesar, and you shall be freed. I bow my knee before one king only, the king of kings. He has already set me free. I am Caesar, says Nero, the emperor, the Roman emperor. There is no other king. Of whom do you speak? King Jesus, my lord and savior, answers Paul. I command you to say, Curious Caesar, which is uh, Roman for Caesar is lord. Not Roman, but Latin. They spoke the language called Latin. In obedience to the only true ruler of heaven and earth, says Paul. I say, Curious Iesus, which means Jesus is Lord in Latin. Next page. How dare you defy me, says Nero. As emperor, I am a son of the gods. I deny all false gods, answers Paul. God's son, our only savior, is Jesus Christ. Behead this man. This blow will mark the end of this vile religion. They will kill you too, Luke. Paul does not want that. The apostle told me you must live to finish your books, somebody said. He wanted to kind of protect Paul, maybe, but... He was stopped. Beg for mercy, you pathetic old fool, they tell him. Do you think I fear one so small as you, answers Paul? The worst you can do to me, answers Paul, is send me to the paradise. Paradise is heaven. To send me, the worst you can do to me is send me to the paradise I long for, where I will forever serve King Jesus. Commander of all the angels' armies. Silence him. He's a madman, a demon. Behead him now. It's all right. Justice, my friend, remember the good news I shared with you? He says, I cannot put your head to the block. I will not, says one of the soldiers, the one who had to take care of Paul. You don't have to. I'm going to do it myself. And he puts his head. And you can cover your eyes if you're sensitive to violence. Whack. That day, the worst man in the world faced the best man. Luke writes, I saw one man possessed by Satan, prince of darkness, and the other possessed by Jesus, creator of light and Lord over all. And it seems that sometimes the storm is winning. Sometimes it's Friday. Sometimes everything goes south, which means everything turns out bad. But Sunday is coming, if you know what I mean. The storm will be over. And what will happen to Nero? We will find out tomorrow what will happen to Nero, the emperor, the one who called himself a son of God couple of lessons today i'll read the first one and i'll ask you to read the second okay paul while he was still alive he wrote these letters and i will uh, uh, uh today we will study about his letters and what he wrote while he was still alive living in tent in his second letter to the corinthians paul encouraged the believers to look forward to what god has prepared he wrote we know that when this earthly tent we now live in is taken down he, uh, he, he's talking about being dead, right? When we die, when this earthly tent we now live in, our body is taken down, God will give us new bodies, homes in heaven that will last forever. Sometimes we get tired of living in bodies that are not perfect. Our bodies are not perfect. That is why we look forward to new bodies we will have in heaven. 
which God will put on us like new clothes. Then our bodies, which are like flimsy tents, will be made new and completely perfect. It is God who has made us and prepared us for this change. He has sent the Holy Spirit to live in us as a promise of what lies ahead. And so we believe these things, even though we cannot see them. That is why we make it our goal to please the Lord. The question, in what way is our body like a tent? He calls our body a tent. Why is our body like a tent? Have you ever spent a whole night in a small tent? I have. When it's cold outside, it's cold inside the tent. When it's hot outside, it's hot inside a tent. But it's still fun, right? It is fun when the weather is fine. But when the wind is howling and is pouring, it is pouring with rain, a flapping, shaky tent no longer, no longer seems the best place to be in. I remember in Korea, we went camping and it was raining so hard and the water was getting inside the tent. We had to dig some holes around the tent. Maybe I can draw a picture later to show you what we did. And the wind was blowing and we're, we were thinking maybe the wind will blow the tent away and we, like Dorothy, will be taken to a magical land of Oz. Well, that didn't happen because I was only taken to Sri Lanka and not uh, Oz. In the same way, let me continue. In the same way, our bodies are fragile in a world that is often unfriendly and unsafe, the world we're living in. It's a broken world, and that's why we can see so much suffering in this world. Yet, just as you can stay dry inside the tent, even in a storm, so your spirit will be kept safe inside your body until God gives your spirit a new home, a body that will last forever, a body that will never get sick. And that's what our hope is. We're looking forward to having bodies that never get sick. Everybody, nobody likes being sick like Nathan is sick right now. I'm sure he's not enjoying it. <laughs> when we get our new bodies in heaven, we will be absolutely perfect. We won't just be like invisible spirits or like angels. We will have real bodies because Jesus had real body after his resurrection, remember? And his disciples touched him. We, we wouldn't be like ghosts. We would have real perfect bodies in heaven. And the best part is that our new bodies will never feel pain, embarrass us, or make us feel that we are not good enough. We will be totally happy forever and ever. And no more sickness, no more COVID, no more diarrhea. Oh my God, why are we talking about that? Verse for today, ready, set, go. But our citizenship but is in heaven. And we are the way to save you from there. there. The Lord Jesus Christ who will transform our lowly bodies so that we will be like a glorious body. We can see 2021. That's right. Our citizenship is in heaven. That's what our true home is. You're not Sri Lankans. I'm not Korean or anything, any, anything else. We belong to the country that is called heaven. Okay? That's where our citizenship is. Even though you don't have the passport, the Holy Spirit who lives in you is proof of that. Let's go to the next lesson or we will never stop. Okay, we will never end. Let's talk about light and darkness. Okay, let's see. We have a couple of hands raised and I'm going to ask Angel. She's visiting us today, thankfully. Angel, can you read the first part, please? Okay, sir. Paul, light and darkness. Paul told the believers in Corinth not to become partners with those who do things like this on a god right and wrong cannot be partners just as light and darkness cannot live together he said jesus christ and the devil can never agree neither will a christian and an unbeliever have the same purpose in life god said i will make my home with my people and live with them i will be their god and they will be my people you must leave them and be separated from them. Have nothing to do with the sinfulness of the Lord. And I will accept you. Have nothing to do with the sinfulness of the world. And I will accept you. Yes, that's what he says. Do not do the same thing that the world does. The world is after money, after pleasure. They try to find pleasure. They try to find happiness in all those things that are far from God. And that's... Why? It says that we can never have the same purpose in life, ever. If you follow the world, you will not follow God. 
if you follow God, you will not follow the world. That's what light and darkness do not mix. Let's read the second part. How can I keep myself separate from the world? Um, Guyana is here. With Guyana, I didn't see you at school today. Are you sick too? I'm in bad school. Why didn't yes, I she was you? there. So. Okay. She was there. Why did you hide yeah. from me then? Okay, can you read? How can I keep myself separate from the world? Read. How can I keep myself separate from the world? What does it mean to be separate from the world? We know that Paul isn't saying that we should leave this world because God put us on this earth for a purpose. What Paul means is that we should stay away from things and people that draw us away from God. Jesus, the Holy Son of God, also came to this sinful earth and he was even tempted to do wrong. The devil tried to make all sorts of deals with Jesus by offering him things that would get him to agree to his plan. But Jesus did not sin by listening to the devil. So the devil started using the people around Jesus to try and trap him. See Matthew 22.15 we live in a sinful world with sinful people. We cannot leave this world to escape sin, nor can we avoid ungodly people. Yet, we should be careful not to make close friends with those who want to do bad things. If we choose to spend our time with those who do wrong, we may start doing those some bad things. And if we get into the habit of doing wrong things, how would others say that we are different from unbelievers? We wouldn't be different from unbelievers if we start doing wrong things. And how do you start doing wrong things? By hanging out with those who do wrong things. So it's real. you have to be really careful. In the future, um, you will face many, um, I guess, chances or opportunities to hang out with bad people. And you will have a choice to say yes or to say no. And probably... Possibly, you would be very, you would be tempted to go and do the bad things with them. You would be tempted very much. But read the verse for today and then we'll see how much time to talk I have. Ready, go. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, 2. That's right. You, there would be many, many, uh, uh, I guess, uh, trials, many tests that you would have to face to follow God or to follow the world. Because sometimes Satan, I told you about it, Satan makes these things, things of the world very pleasing to the eye. And it, it's, it's just something that our flesh, our body, Flesh means body. Flesh lusts for. And this world would throw things at you, those kind of things. It would test your faith. Will you say yes to the world or will you say yes to God? Many times in your life you will have to face these tests. It's not easy. And this world, this world is turning away from God more and more and more every day. So you have to be strong in your faith. Stand strong, stand firm in the faith, be courageous. <laughs> That's, uh, what is that? First Corinthians 16, 13, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. From stand. The question is, will you take a stand for the right thing for yourself? Or will you follow the world? Sometimes, well, we all may make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. We all made mistakes. I myself myself made mistakes many times. Sometimes I followed the world. Then later I felt guilty. I felt very bad about doing those things. Because I was young and foolish. And you're still young and foolish. You might say, no, I'm not foolish. I will never make foolish mistakes. But you're still young. And when you're young, you are foolish. Young equals foolish, just like two plus two equals four. Okay, <laughs> indeed. Which means that we will all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Of course. Yeah. But be wise. The more mistakes you make, the more sorry you will be in the future. The fewer mistakes you make, 
the less sorry you will be. And God, God oh, will always no, like... forgive us. Of course, he will. If he loves us, he will forgive us when we repent and come back to him. But those sins, when we follow the world, they will leave some consequences in our life. They always leave consequences in our life. Like take a paper and, you know, make a paper bowl. Fold it in a few times. Crumple the paper in your hands. Then try to unfold it. When you unfold it, there are still lines where you folded it and crumpled it. Same thing with our life. Even though God forgives, even though there is no condemnation for our mistakes, God doesn't remember them anymore. There are the lines where we crumpled the paper, where we folded it. The lines remain, and those are consequences. Maybe broken relationships, maybe hurt feelings, maybe people who don't talk to us anymore because of what we did or because of what we said. Just heartache, you know, of past mistakes. That is still there, even though God doesn't remember our sins anymore. He forgives us and he forgets, but the pain remains. Right, and doesn't matter how um, how much you you know doesn't matter how much you try to well, I'm not sure how to say it. <laughs> Let me just not say it. Uh, who would like to pray for us today? So I would like. Oh, Angel! All right, please do. I I don't remember you praying. It was a very very long time ago. Please do. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this wonderful day, Lord. Thank you for protecting and guide us, Lord. Please protect us during our sleep, Lord. Please make us more faithful and help us to learn. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Great prayer. Good night, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow morning at school. And I'll be Good talking night. to you about dinosaurs tomorrow morning. Don't miss it. Yeah. Bye, sir. God bless you. Bye. 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 Bye.